Mm. This is the Reflector Reflections podcast. My name is Annie. Join me as we journey around the world talking with fellow human design enthusiasts, specifically reflectors, as they experiment and navigate their unique design. Today's beautiful conversation is with Shu. See, I say it off air and then I <laughs> stuff it up again. I've done this so many times before. Shui, Shui. Yes, yes, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and forgive me. Um, Shui is a 2-5 reflector with the right angle cross of rulership and this beautiful being here is a gifted DJ, programmer and musician. He's also an incredible spiritual soul with skills in tarot, astrology, human design, gene keys and spiritual coaching. Welcome. Hi Annie, thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. It's actually my first time to join this type of podcast. So like my heart is beating, my body is reacting to that, but I'm, I'm uh, also like, I think it's a part of the, the learning path I'm choosing now to put myself out there. And so that like the people like me can find myself, like it's a, uh, it's quite a journey. <laughs> oh, and I really feel you in that, especially you've got that second line. So it's naturally, you know, you're really comfortable in your own space, but sometimes it's like, trust me, I've been doing this for three years and I still, as you heard, I stuff up my words and. It's also that fifth line. We're, we're going to get into that a little bit as well because I'm sure that, you know, it, it does play out. It's that fear of kind of stepping into your rightful space, but you could be ripped down really fast. Ugh. Now, <laughs> I want to I want to take us back. I want to hear about you and your journey. So how did human design find you or you find human design? So I I started to know my human design a month ago at the beginning of this year, but I started to get into the spiritual study, started to read some book about like six years ago. Um, I started by reading some book from like like Thess, Thess Speaks, like the whole series of book. And then and then I learned I read some book about like a Jindu Krishna Muri. And after that, I have been because I I was an atheist, like I don't believe in anything. My mom is a Buddhism. I grew up like don't believe in because I'm I was an engineer, so like super like a technical driven, and I follow my logic to everything. I sometimes even astrology I even hate it because like it's a, I, I hate to be defined by those things. It's a part of the reflector thing. But I had this super intense spiritual awakening almost a year ago. And uh, it's actually read at a, a super hard time because I went through my Saturn return for the past two years. And I, I went through a serious like addiction journey. I was like um, a heavy meth addiction, especially in the gay community here in New York City. It was quite intense. And my family is having issue at the same time. And at the same time, I got laid off by, the, by my company. And as an international worker, if I couldn't find my job in 60 days, I would be deported. My, I will lose my all the things here. So like I was uh, lost and also kind of like super price. And so the first month I was like injecting mouse at my apartment, constantly having sex, kind of like just want to go like the super, super dark side of myself. And then I met this guy, which we still like doing drugs, but a lot of the things, but he's a kind of spiritual and he's also lost. So the two lost so start to talk about all the things. So we will go through a super intense drug cycle. And then in the morning during the day, we just start to go into super deep philosophical talking about our past. There's like a deep, deep soul connection there. And he is a terror reader. So during my spiritual awakening for that month, for that week, every day I pull the card, I will get the fool. And uh I, I just couldn't explain with my logic because it's what is like the chance which every day you pull the card is always the fool. And uh, I start to believe there's something magical there. And so after like a few days, like constantly battling with myself and a guilty, I start to like really understand how I do drugs and what is what's like the reason why I keep draw back to the same cycle. So there was one night he's doing drugs there and I finally know myself, like, that's not the things I want to do. Every time I was just reflecting back their desire and I lost myself because I want to please other people. So that night I say no. And exactly the same night, the I had a dream, a super powerful and intense dream, which I had a dream in which all my ancestors put their hand on me and dragged me through a river. 
and I see a guy with like a black guy with a curl hair. And he said like, oh, you're finally here. We have been waiting for you for so much, so such a long time. So he took me touring through different timeline. And I see so many possibilities of me, the different version of me. Some of the version get married, some of with a close friends. I like, and then after that, he brought me back to that empty, the void space, asked me, like, do you know why you're being sent to the earth? I was like, I don't know, like why I'm here. He said, like, you are there to feel. And then I just woke up. And I see my clock, I grab the clock, it's showing like 707. So next day when I open YouTube. Uh, there's a tarot reader exactly rephrase my dream in details saying like, oh, you finally got the chance to meet your guide and uh, he's telling you why you're here. What's your life purpose? What's your mission? I was like, fuck, I, I couldn't believe that. Like, because I all my life, I've been believe in my logic. I believe the big bang theory, which everything is just like a one chance or like the coincidence. And then that moment I was like, that's not something I could explain. So once I believe that, at the same week when I pull the card, I always get one card from the uh, the Oracle card called like the Luna Witch. The card I pull every day is like mirror, mirror. And after that, I start to um, getting some information from people talking about manifesting generator. I don't know what that is. I saw it just like people tagging themselves as manifesting generator. So I don't know is anything related to that. But after tarot card, I start to learn astrology. Um, because each card is related to a planet aspect. I was like, if tarot card is having some magic, astrology must have some magic too. So I learned astrology and then I started to drive myself to the human design. And even, actually kind of funny because I check myself as a reflector. I didn't pay attention. So a month after I check again, I was like, oh, actually I'm a reflector. And then at that moment, I just everything is just clicked because... Because during my addiction, I've been always telling my friends that why I was not feeling myself. Because the reason I tell, like the journey I, sh I share with other my the the people around me is like I don't know how I feel, but every time I'm with someone, I can feel their feeling, and that's why like I become I, when I'm all by myself. I sometimes I feel a little bit numb, like especially for the negative emotion. I just never feel sad. I look happy all the time, but also like nothing can affect me. And but every time people sharing their story, I start to feel connected to that. And uh, when I got reading through the reflector, all the things I've like finally have finding this comfort or the scene from that part of strategy or set of language, I just feel oh, wow, it's amazing. Wow. A long story. That, no, that's <laughs> beautiful. I like you had me on the edge of my seat. I'm just like, you know, I love these journeys because it's, it's, it's sometimes not straightforward. It's like a meandering little river, isn't it? You know, I really love that, um, that you've been gifted that. And I often say here as well, my guides or spirit or essence or source or whatever it is, it's subtle as a sledgehammer. Sometimes it's like, you know, those cards being shown to you day in, day out. It's just like, are you paying attention? <laughs> you know, it's like literally subtle as a sledgehammer. Um, oh, yeah. that, that that journey of yours, I think, is is very common of that feeling. And it's interesting that your guide has, well, has sort of said to you, you're here to feel. And it's probably one of the hardest things. And as you've done, you've kind of tried to check out, you know, with drugs, alcohol, and all those kind of things of just avoiding feeling. Yes. I think that's it's a, that's a hero's journey in a way, you know, the heroine hero's journey of overcoming these huge challenges. So um, congratulations, firstly, like well done. Huge, thank you, thank you. huge. It's, it's like slowly getting to know that I should be proud of myself. And even like after this type of journey, like sometimes this is actually, uh, I, I start to publicly share about all my addiction. I still remember that day when I, shoot this video because I never do the public speaking and the first thing I share is actually sharing my journey is I have a three years math addiction and here is all the feelings I have on social media I was like that's a lot but after that I I remember the day when I shared that and then I opened YouTube like the first recommended video is uh, there is a channel called uh, the pink boss and he's saying oh you finally did it like your spiritual guide is so proud of you I was like, that's and after that, there's so many 
romantic. I think it's super romantic thing happening in my life. The synchronicity. Sometimes I remember there was once I went to learn some hair cutting class, and then once I got back, I opened a tarot card. The first card is like all the head magic happening in the barber chair. I was like, you can you couldn't say like. Once I start to accept that part of the things which I have a way to connect with my higher self or the universe, there's so many romantic synchronicity happening in my life. And that, that's why, like, when I share these things with my friends, like, I I think lots of people are afraid, especially now I start to do astrology as my professional career. And I went through a journey which, like, people just constantly judging about the system I'm using, like, saying, like, why you say the birth time and place could define who I am. But I don't know how other people feel. I think it's part of the gift from Reflector, which we are just so open to everything. But my personal journey is like, I find some romantic when you believe, because before when I believe everything is coincidence, everything is, some, I always say I'm lucky or not lucky. But now I just believe everything is perfect. Like for the our, the, the time, like, Everything is just like it's not like it's it's just like I will always go back to my chart or my human design to find something magical there, and I find oh such a perfect and beautiful thing. I love that, and I love that you're using the words romanticizing as well because I often sort of say it's getting to know us, and the more we get to know us, the more this this it's beautiful, and it's like we're our own love story. You know, we're getting to know ourselves when we've abandoned ourselves so much probably in the past and and it's like, oh, I, I, I don't mind those parts of me, even the ugly ones, you know, or what I we perceive as the ugly ones. It's like, no, I actually really like that. Um it's a it's beautiful. I think that's the that's the gift. That's the journey, isn't it? Being so open and not being pressed down. Yeah. Can, can I take us back to your and it's really interesting. I, I'd really love to hear this story because you were telling, you're sharing with me off off air that you're originally from China, and you were just yeah. saying there before that you know you're agnostic and and your family was Buddhist. I mean, and now you're into you know astrology and stuff. So that's a journey in itself. But take us back to your youth and your upbringing. Do you have um, any idea of of your raised environment? Like who was who was raising you, mum and dad, or your brothers and sister yes um my childhood is kind of a very intense because uh when i was born my parents are su super poor so you couldn't like it was so busy to go out and get some money back so i when i was young i was constantly transitioned like to transit like to different relatives family i grew up with my auntie with like some neighbors and most of the time I just like keep trying different environment. And when I finally got 10 and my parents trying to find a better education system, but in China, like it's depending on whether the city is close to the center of the, the, the state. So I have to, I went to another city with my auntie and my uncle after 10 for there for my middle school and high school. So I spent not that much time with my parents. But they do deeply affect me because uh, it's a lot. My parents are like they. Well, that's why, like, when I try to put a part of my whole family, I see the whole karmic relationship between my parents and I. So, um, my, our family is super poor before ten, and after ten, my dad started to become this uh, loan shark, and our family just suddenly got rich, but. That loan shark business is required my dad to be super violent. So it's basically you loan money to different people, but with a higher interest. So my, my dad like is constantly involving to use the violence to get the money back. And uh, my dad and my mom it used to fight all the time. There was once I still remember my dad just stabbed my mom on the like the, the apps, like and then almost like kill my mom. But they're still together now. Uh, it, that's a, like that's why I think when I later when I go into the psychotherapy like trying to understand how I understand my relationship that's why I start to see how my parents relationship affect me that much because at that at time uh, it's uh, diagnosed me as a counter codependency which 
every time the people closer to my loving zone, I will feel scared and want to push them back. It's because like all the time when my mom and my dad, they fight and they 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 just like beat each other. And my, my mom will always say, I'm going to leave your dad. And he will come to me saying, Late, a week after come back saying it's because of you i i cannot leave you because i cannot give you a broken family so i have to sacrifice myself to be with your dad so they can have a the happiness life but it's not the truth i and now i understand back at that time i believed that i i was the reason why my family is suffering and if it is a love we have to stick together and that's like how basically how I grew up like now, but I'm, I'm lucky enough because after 10, I went to live with, I live with my auntie and my auntie is such a beautiful, warming like woman. He trusted me because before 10, I had a diagnosis like the super, the slight version of uh, autism. There was a two year, I just barely talk. My parents saw that there's something wrong with me. But he, she is so patient. She's just constantly leading me to talk in public and and trying to talk to me, understand how I feel. And slowly I start to talk. I start to put myself in the spotlight. I'm still scared, but sometimes those memories still come back. Even now, like I, when I start to talk, especially this type of conversation, or I, I can feel my body, like my voice sometimes shaking. But yeah, I'm still slowly enjoying that. <laughs> but that's uh, my family. Because my mom was a Buddhism. Mm. Uh, but later she quit. I don't know why. I never asked. But my family is not that spiritual now. Uh, that's kind of like kind of tricky now. I start to become taking this role to sharing, macro dosing this type of knowledge I learned. But yeah, that's a uh, other thing. <laughs> indoctrinating people back in it's I I know what that's like going my my families or you know when they were here on on earth school they were they're quite older but I'd still like throw in sort of things and sometimes they'd be sort of open and receptive and other times they'd be like ah oh, what is that garbage <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> it is like I found because uh, my dad is so blocked still emotional block so every time I was not talking spiritual, even ask him to share more about how he feels. And he will say, oh, why are you being so polite to me? Like, that's not how a father-son relationship should be. I was like, I'm not talking polite. I was just like inviting you to share more. Just like be honest about how you feel. And he feel like it's a bit cheesy. And that's why like I was constantly leading him. Now, instead of uh, like doing this uh, spiritual like education want to change them i just share something fun with my life i like posting something i see hope that will slowly macrodosing and change them but it's yeah. it's, it's it's a whole life journey to get over like the whole the childhood or like the parents relationship yeah. And moving countries like leaving china coming to the united states you know, there's this feeling um, that I've observed in a lot of reflect, actually in, in people in general, that sometimes that movement of environment can really encourage just thriving and growth. Um, and it seems like that's happened for you. Can you share with me that that journey of leaving leaving the motherland? Yes. Um, so the Chinese culture is super family oriented. Like even that's actually I did a lot of uh, even lots of uh, lessons or the learning from all those old patterns. Because not only my parents have the those like the self sabotage pattern or like trying to torture each other, my whole family has that pattern as well. So my my the older and the older brother of my father, it comes or like the whole they constantly having the business failure. And my grandma will stand out, ask my father to help them. And even though my father doesn't want to, there was like millions of dollars that happened, like transaction. It just like gave to the people constantly making mistakes. And, and because for Chinese cultural blood, bloodline relationship or the whole family is so fucking important that you have to help them no matter how hard, what kind of the things they have done to you, you have to stand out, help them. And I, I suffer a lot because 
my mom and my dad, even though they are strong in their business field, but once they come back to the family, they just they help they helpless. They they believe that they have to help their brothers and sisters. And grow up in that family, I become this role because I'm the only one in my family which well educated, because all my parents is they are just elementary school and they have already entered the, the society. So I become this role constantly taking their resentment complain. So I hate the family thing, but th those hate is constantly transferring to me as a, like, I hate these all kinds of relationship. I'm so scared of all kinds of intimate relationship. Mm -hmm. That's probably why like I never had a relationship before 30, like not even, and uh, every time people were getting close to me, I was like, there's a too much trouble. If we're getting closer, it means no matter how hard, what kind of thing happen, they will always come back to me. And they're always like, there's no way I can say no. So uh, after moving to the United States, I feel like, oh, I finally open sea. I can finally swim around. I still afraid of uh, the relationship, but at the same time, that's, that's probably why New York City is such like a capital waiting to me because there's something here is about like, you can be, I, I cannot use the word selfish, but I think that's kind of, when you, you don't have to take care of everyone. You can just leave by yourself here. If you want feel like it's too much, you can just withdraw and just getting back to your apartment, so like hiding in the shell, like, and no one will blame you for that. And that's why like, I, I feel I'm finding myself slowly by living in this city just all by myself but people say like it's a lot because oh you're just a whole family is another city and you never have any relationship you just live in your apartment by myself but i'm so happy <laughs> like <laughs> as a, like a two line the hermit like i every time i just leave by myself i have so much thing to do i can go take some lessons reading some book but yeah oh the i love that i'm <laughs> i'm happy for you that you're happy because i know and i think the more that anyone but with, this is a reflector podcast so we'll speak to the reflector it's just we really start to love our our own space and when we start to feel I, I say this quoting but you know clean our auras feel clean because we're not constantly bombarded by other people's energies and um, I think they are, as we traverse through this journey the more we want that because it feels good but we still need to go out into the world because I don't know about you, but especially with the second line, it might be a little bit different, but sometimes we can withdraw a little bit too much, you know? So yes. share with us about that two, five journey of, you know, finding human design and then, you know, um, discovering that profile line. Yeah. Like I think a two, five was such an interesting interplay because at the same time you want to withdraw and getting back to, yourself back to your apartment but the fifth line is constantly putting people to you and and uh i feel this kind of like energies every time i learn something i really want to share them because as a, i'm as a Virgo ascendant i enjoy serving people and i get my full fulfillment when i know i'm helping them and that's that's actually why when i look back about my addiction journey i think there's something destined to happen there because i don't know why my addiction journey, like the people, the universe keeps sending people want to learn this spiritual knowledge. So we we're doing drugs at night and next morning we were just like going to super deep and talk about the trauma, all those things. I kind of count how many people just cry on my shoulder and I will offer them. And every time they are lost, when they are texting around the dating app and saying like, I have nowhere to go. And I will invite them, cooking for them, offering some food, I will listen to them. I think that's because of the, I think right, my gene key 22nd is about like turn the dishonor into grace. And that's what the addiction journey bring to me. And even though those are the hardest part, like I still find so many beautiful things about the people are suffering all those things. And then th that's also part of the fifth line. Like I want to, are uh, people asking me these things. I want to share what I learned from those relationships, even though I'm sometimes I'm afraid of to to get involved with them. But yeah, like by enjoying those push and pull, mm -hmm. and uh, by 
I think that's a part of the thing about reflector. I can only know myself when I'm talking to other people. And now I start to talk to my spiritual community. F2 Mantra is helping me. And I find myself the deepness of my conscious. Sometimes when I talk to them and I are writing some notes, I just find, wow, I'm so deep. Like I never realized that part. When I talk to them, there's something when they ask the right question and there's so many things just flow through my mind. And that moment I was just like, yeah, like I never know I can achieve this type of a thing. Cause I, I don't know how I can talk, but after a year, like by pushing myself and making conscious different choice, I don't experiment like this type of thing. I send a message to you and uh, put myself out there. And I, I discover something like deep or if flowing, which is not from me. I think sometimes it's just some conversation on knowledge there that flowing through me. And especially as as a musician, I I deeply feel connected to the music wise as well. Most of the time when I start to make beats, when I'm not thinking, not conscious about what I want to produce, there's always the best sound just flow through me in two hours. But yeah, that's a, a kind of a how I feel about the two five. I love um I love what you were mentioning there about being deep. I don't think I've ever met a fellow reflector in all my years who doesn't like, yeah, we can be surface level, but oh gosh, once the conversation goes, it's like, whoa, it's, I don't think we're built for to surface level things. And I love what you were saying there about before when you were mentioning like being there for people, it's this, you know what? that's probably the greatest work of the whole world is to just be there, show compassion, show love and kindness. And I think it's hard for reflectors because that doesn't always pay the bills, you know, but it's the most loving worth. Like there's a part of us that's just deeply that we will be there. Um, when we're going through this journey ourselves, finding the outcasts, helping them, allowing them to feel safe. I'm just like hearing that from you. I was just like, oh, oh, that just filled my heart with such joy. And I was, I just had to share that with you as well. But speaking of depth as well, like you've got one of my favorite, I always say this, my favorite gate. I don't know why, probably because I too have struggled with my level of depth. Not many people can meet me at my level of depth, if I start getting into things, people just their eyes glaze over or they they can't go there. And I've got gate 48. And I know you've got gate 48 a couple of times too in your chart. And it's like mm. every time I <laughs> I'm like, there's the there's the well. There's the well right there. But do you have that some with your friends as well where they're just Oh, yes, definitely. You, you cannot imagine at the beginning of my spiritual awakening, I was like, fuck, I find the secret of the universe. I need to share. So I scheduled with all my friends with one-on-one -on -one meeting. I was talk to them like in two or three hours sharing like, oh, you know, th all these things magic happening. But it didn't, it didn't go that well. Cause um, I think most of the time, like it's a way too much. Like it's great that I can share the thing, but I think the, that's like the key thing I learned is like, I have to respect their cycle, their demand timing. I think everyone is taking different time or class in an order. Someone will take spiritual class first and then getting back to the, the this physical ground, like the tangible thing. And for for us, which like we take a spiritual courses first, if we want to push that heart, sometimes like they can understand it by waiting for the planet activation, like the Saturn return. If you want to inject so many knowledge to them before all the things, you will find you want to change them. You want to expect a specific result. And it's only take us like to, to like our relationship. That's why like I start to say, okay, I need to wait for my friends to experience themselves because I know how amazing it is to find your inner guidance by yourself. That intensity when they have you have epiphany moment and everything just clicked out. So that's why like, I still slowly sharing them because uh, I think by telling them I'm a professional astrologer is already a lot. And I, I actually just did this uh, training session with my coach, like, because uh, two weeks ago we were, I was with my, all my friends and uh, 
I will go to question again about astrology. But before, I will feel angry. I don't know why, because I feel it's a, such a beautiful set of language, no matter human design and astrology. And when people are holding bias or question it without even getting into that, but we we know how deep it is. We read so many books and going so deep about all the things. We really want people to benefit from that. But now I even have some joke about astrology to tell him with my friends. I think it's such a quite a journey for me because if I reflect myself saying, I'm actually want gain this acknowledgement and validation from the people around me. Like no matter the things I believe, like I want them to believe what I believe. But now if I look back and say, there's some shadow there when I'm getting triggered by people not believing in astrology or human design, I think that's like the lessons I need to learn. So like now I have some joke. I was not, before I was so rushed. I was keep talking and say, oh, you have to believe this. This is so deep, so deep. But now I just like, okay, I don't think I have enough time to tell how deep it is. It is but I can just joke around with you and slowly telling you something about me. And I'm not like hurry. I think I was just like waiting for them to, when it's a time, maybe someday my knowledge will pop up in their mind. I'll say, I'll come to me saying, oh, you know, something you said is right. Yeah. Because yeah, that's like how I do this type of thing. But it is, like, I was so mad at myself which like I couldn't express all this set of knowledge. Sometimes I even question myself whether I deliver it correctly. But now I just like, okay, if not the time, not the time. Like I will just wait. And, but I will, at the same time, I will put myself to find my community. I'm mm -hmm. going to the local astrology meetup and there's people there which can talk in your language. But we can still waiting for my old friends. Once they reach, like sometimes we split, sometimes we got back, but it is. You know, there's grace playing out right there earlier where you were saying, you know, you just wait, wait until they're ready. That's grace right there because we've all been there. We still do it. I still do it sometimes. It's like, but I know all this stuff and so I'm going to tell you everything. <laughs> yeah. And it's like it's it's like you're going in there to, to the jugular, you know, you're going right in there and go, hey, oh, look at this, and they're not ready for it. And it's discernment. It's really, it's it's a tricky path to tread and it's knowing your whole body feels this and the more that you're in touch with yourself and your being, the more you can kind of share it. But it's also being filtered through our own lens. So it may not be, it may not be received as well. And quite often it's not received very well. Um <laughs> And I know for yeah. reflectors in certain communities, um, we're encouraged to wait for the invitation, very similar to a projector. And it's yeah. like, oh, whatever. But it's it's in a way true. It's like until somebody's ready and we go blah <laughs> and they go, what the fuck? Annie, what did you just say? Or they're hurt. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 I didn't mean that. I know how that feels. It's just, oh, bored. <laughs> Like all the human design system, no matter the different type, I think the whole key of the whole set of knowledge is like, you have to be patient, but that patience really require you to out of like a super deep, deep trust about the timing and the trust about like everything is happening. And there's like no rush. I think the whole, even now, like I still reading about the spiritual community saying, oh, it's a portal. You have to hurry up or it will be close. I think it's it's definitely not the information the spiritual team because you know at the first when i spiritual came, awakening i was like i have to share this knowledge it's, it's the time it's the time like our society is like going into this like so many war everything but now i just i find like focusing on myself or finding my own pace to say i have this trust is it's contributing much more to public saying all those political opinion and all those things and i think all those the other side of the world is a constant reflection of our own, own shadow if everyone can just dealing with their own thing to say okay i trust that i believe in the cyclic nature of the timing and i would just wait here patient and understand yeah. like just following the flow and understand like it's all the waves this world will be so much better than everyone sharing their opinions and to say like finding a way but yeah there's a um it, it's kind of an unpopular opinion but it's quite popular as well that with reflectors 
by us slowing down, you know, by us slowing down and having to wait, we are naturally in training others to slow down and wait. And it's the hardest thing of all that pressure, you know, oh, the portal's closing. You know, when you have those Black Friday sales come around, it's always like, no, but you have to do it on this day. That is the worst experience for a reflector. (laughs) However, sometimes the pressure's been building for a while or the thought has been building for a while. So we can make decisions quite quickly because it's already been in the body for a period of time and we've been traversing it. Speaking of cycles, when you have been a part of this experiment and journey, have you kind of got into that waiting lunar cycles for things? Yes, I, I experiment with it for the first three months because uh, I have even have like Excel uh, the the form to say uh, which day I will become a manifesting generator, which day I become a projector, and I did experiment with that. But I think uh, people have a different journey. But for me, I understand myself which. Because human design is a decision-making system. But the key thing I learned from my relationship with human design is like, I think I treat everything as a decision. And it's really causing some trouble for me because everything I start to getting overthinking because my mind is not stopping at all. Like it's just constantly thinking or constantly waiting. Sometimes I become paralyzed. So the first three months experiment with that, I do feel someday like, I become this thing and carry some project out. But I'm also trying, I think I want to learn is, I think 90% of the life is just a choice. And only 10% of them is just decision. And I know from myself is like, I have to quit the overthinking part or quit the waiting part to make a choice first and then understand myself and making decision. So that's why like I still I find I'm not using that as a tool to make a future thing, but I always going back and trying to see why it's reflecting in that way. Like I'm using astrology as like my major tool. I still do annual perfection, but I'm not going to the detail about the 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 timing. Sometimes when a thing happens, like I schedule our appointment like August 15. I use my intuition to schedule that. And then I will go back to the astrological chart to see why I'm making that. And then I'll see, oh, the Venus is on top of my ascendant. What magical is this? Like, I think that's the thing about the surprising part of uh, Reflector. Like, I I have to go through a, a huge lessons to understand what is um, uh, expectation, what is dreaming, and what is manifestation. Because... Mm-hmm. I'm so good at dreaming. I'm a Pisces sun. Like sometimes I can sit in here, imagine I'm dying and people around me and what was the final words I'm speaking to them. (laughs) And sometimes I was like dreaming about how I made my partner. So every time, especially this type of conversation before, I will do the rehearsal thing. I was trying to make the perfect plan about what I'm going to talk. And I will come up with different type of scenario situation and it's always turning to expectation. And every time it will make me feel the disappointment mm. about like what the things is not going as what it is. But now I think I just treat it as a choice. Like now I make a choice, I'm going back and I check how I feel and let it go. And it's kind of the same as the 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 all the other things. I I slowly to make everything a choice even like I find I'm at like the maximum level of happiness when I'm not treating everything as like the, a decision because this is like the human design if you truly trust you probably doesn't need any guidance to make a decision anymore I think human design is at a specific life, life stage which you're kind of like not sure about how you make a decision or sometimes you need a second voice to help you to make those decisions and you find some comfort or reconciliation from that system. But now, like, I think I experiment for the, for, I, I may go back. Like, I feel like I still won't go back and to experiment all those things, but my current lesson is to learn how to just make a choice instead of a decision. <laughs> oh, I love that. You know, I'm the same. I've done all the tracking backwards, forwards, inside out, upside down, trying to pick it apart. You know, I've got a first line body. It wants to, and I've also got a really skeptical mind. It's like the mind has to know well, it bloody doesn't because I haven't been able to find it. So I just have to surrender 
I don't really care much for that word because I like to be an active participant in my life, but <laughs> I surrender to things that happen. Um, and I've just found that like, I'm, I'm an active participant in my life. I don't just wait, you know, I don't just circle something on the calendar and go, I'm going to wait a lunar cycle for this. I'm an active participant. And I can't, you know, what feels right in your body automatically anyway, because often something's been ruminating in our minds or in our bodies for sometimes months before the decisions even presented itself. I find that this is a thing with reflectors. It's like, it's already up there in the ether. We just kind of pull it down. So sometimes it's quite an easy thing to just journey through because we already have felt it. I think that's why we're so annoying. Talk to me about that disappointment though, because, oh my Lordy, <laughs> disappointment. How's that showed out in your life? I think, uh, yeah, because uh, I think being perfect or like those projection or expectation is a, just a huge topic, not, not only for reflector, like for everyone, because we are living in this world, like people just expecting each other to behave a certain way. And to understand everything around me is a reflection on my inner state. Like I find I overcome the disappointment, my dis own disappointment by dis by disappointing other people. <laughs> like that's how I how I like because before no matter how like I find that's like the whole journey I find the emotion is such a, like, a way for me to make a decision, but emotion is so multi-layered and multifaceted. And uh, after like knowing human design or knowing authority thing, I understand like I have a more mercy about how I feel or like the wave of emotion. Like before I will think is either all issue, which like you're either feeling gratitude about the things happening in your life or you're feeling disappointment. But it, Later, I find out is it can coexisting at the same time. It's not either or. The boundary is so blurred, and sometimes it's depending on which thoughts came in later, and you will believe that will be how you treat that. So I feel so much guilty from that disappointment by saying, "Am I being not satisfied with what what the one the one gave to me?" And I judge myself for not holding that gratitude. But later, I find like I can be both <laughs> like I can be a little bit disappointment because like it's okay to have expectation it's okay to want it to have some some specific level of control and I'm so good at dreaming and it's okay to dream but it, I it doesn't mean I'm not feeling grateful about what thing happened to me I think that all the reflector have to embrace that part which our emotional layer or how we feel is all dependent on what type of a storyline I'm telling myself if you believe in this certain of logic or system, you can always go back to find the evidence support that. And that's like how I overcome that. Now, like, I would just like, no matter, I will always make sure the final thought came into my mind is like, I think I'm good. I feel grateful about what happened to me. And it's okay. Like I feeling a little bit disappointed because like I, I'm so good at dreaming. And that's like the whole conversation I talk to myself. I was like, I'm so you are so good at dreaming. And your dream looks sounds fantastic. And it's might happen in another reality. It's just not this one, because there's something better in this reality is have waiting for you. That's like the whole way how I overcome that disappointment. Like I'm allow myself to dream to manifest the specific consequence. But when it happens, it's not what I expected. I'm telling myself that is it's okay. Like some other realities happen exactly what you want and you shouldn't stop dreaming and you shouldn't stop trying to do all this fantastic thing because it's part of my nature I love that I'm a dreamer too <laughs> I do love it I love I'm more of a lucid dreamer I, I love oh. dreaming I love visiting different places and it's Oh, when I turn, when I chat with a fellow dreamer, it's just like, well, we can just dream. It's just like, Annie, you have to be practical. You're here on earth. Come on, bring it in, bring it back. <laughs> I, I, find, I find my disappointment often can show me when something's really not aligned for me. You know, instead of looking at it like that, I, I can sometimes like look at it. I'm like, I'm disappointed in 
somebody's work ethic or or mm, this is just not quite right it feels disappointed and I'm like am I disappointed because I didn't get what I want or am I disappointed because this alignment this partnership or whatever I'm in or environment is not good so it's like a bit of a red flag for me um, to remove myself from situations you know it could be especially when it's a constant disappointment um, it's yeah one of my little telltales of just saying you know maybe don't work with this person or or this is this is not a correct environment for you. Um, so yeah, using it in different ways that, <laughs> those emotions and generally it'll save it saves me, like it's just you know saves a bit a bit dramatic. But it's like yeah that's that's good. I love what you said. Yeah, I feel good. That's good. That was a good good choice. Not disappointed anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I feel yeah like a less like I think like all the other type like. That's like the also a major lesson I learned from the the Mars energy is about like if you have a confusion at the very beginning and you have to believe you have the power to fix it no matter like because it will build up as a disappointment and then it will later later trigger the anger because it's only when you believe you don't have the the power to fix it at the very beginning and then like it's just like a lingering block until you just burst it out. It's not like it still feel good to burst it out, but if it, I think it's uh, teaching us to just at the very beginning and trying to slowly checking and each trigger and fix it at the the very early stage. I love but, that. Yeah. You know, I've um I've really enjoyed overlaying my human design and gene keys knowledge with astrology. I found you know I'm I f still feel like such a beginner with astrology, but it really helps me kind of look at those transits a little bit more, especially those you know. Of Venus, Mars, and Mercury planets that we're kind of like more, you know, as reflectors, we are conditioned by the planetary bodies in the sky. Like that makes so much sense of why that it helps us pay attention to that. So, yeah, I um I can understand. So, where are you at in your journey right now? In your human design journey, your gene keys, and your astrology journey? Share with us what you're up to, friend. Yeah. Uh. So currently, I'm I'm still using all the spiritual knowledge as a therapeutic tool around my friends. I'm not like doing it as like a serious, like the business like pattern. Cause I, I, I do want to start that, but I still feel there's so much thing to learn. I will constantly put myself in the community. I actually host one spiritual workshop, which is for people sharing experience once. And I, it's, it's one well, but I'm constantly just trying to direct my energy to my music career. Cause I, I think being a DJ, is really perfect for a reflector because we are just so good at reading the room. And I find a my maximum level of fulfillment from just playing the song. And because I don't know why there's something magical about being a DJ, which everyone come to you to be happy. <laughs> like that, like it's a totally different from as a spiritual coaching. Like I think it's kind of the same, but there's something which we don't you don't need to talk and you just like feel the energy in the room and communicate with them out of the language because I, I think music or, or human design is all different sets of language and uh that's why like now from i left my job as a software engineer after 10 years and i started to do music as my full-time career but like as a side job i was using astrology as a tool to build a connection and to help the people around me because i believe like the universe will always send the right people to me like and it happens like as i find especially yesterday like there's a people reaching out to me asking these things and my i start to find all the people i met now is super spiritual like there was once my uber driver started to talk spiritually to me i was like okay i don't i don't think i need to go out and to find them because when i tell them myself they will come to me and they will come to me so that's like my current journey now like i just uh just trying to spend more time producing but i'm still using myself or learning from my peers about their experience and like deeper my understanding about astrology and all those things. Beautiful. You know, um, the past year I've been really exploring the melancholy gates in human design. I mean, it's always been there, but like anything, you kind of come in and out, in and out, in and out. And creatives, artists, it, it requires a level of melancholy. So, um, you know, to go into that that kind of like darker place or deeper place and sit there. And then it's like the energy is is built and the creations can come. And I feel that music, art, all of those 
there's a lot we have to have that level of melancholy to be able to sort of like build the energy to be able to create it's absolutely fascinating and I think that's why a lot of artists through multiple genres we 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 have highs and lows we have high highs and low lows we're not kind of even keel all the time and I think there's beauty beauty in that so yeah like like that's why at the beginning when I start to understand all those things I have a a huge understanding about why I went through though so much pain and suffering because this is triggering my curiosity and I think curiosity is like the such a key I think the most important thing about like being an artist like you have to want to go deeply explore yourself and the pain and the suffering those energy is the same energy as every other thing that's why I feel like for people who went through the life of law they always can put their direct energy to something beautiful like they say those those songs is actually telling express some emotion which other people couldn't that's why they feel connected to the art piece they created and uh yeah like I, it's kind of funny because right after i went through my addiction journey i become happy all the time i find like damn like i had a hard time trying to produce a song now <laughs> that's why like now i start to find some other way to i will produce some song I'm super happy or i will produce something like to um a, a, to express my gratitude to all the the divine even though it's like the tech the electronic house sound but I start to read some books or listen to some other beats and trying to reflect them, feel them, and then direct it to the energy. It's not like from my, my own energy anymore, but I, I still like, I find some other way to express that, like the creative all that. But it's, it is like, I went through a journey with like, there was a two or three months, which like, I'm so happy. I don't want to produce the, the sound, <laughs> but when I was sad, I was so productive. But, you yeah. have to tap into that dream journey. And pull the pull the things from your dreams. <laughs> yeah, I actually I have this dream recording app. Every time I dream, I will sing. I will sing a piece of a melody. So I will record it, but it's not long. It's sometimes it's just 10 seconds. But I will grab that melody, transfer it to the MIDI notes, and produce a song based on that. Oh, like it's <laughs> wow. I'll have to get that app. How do I do that? That's just, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, there's an app. It's you collect that. Yeah, they will record. Not... You sad when you dream, but I'm not a musician, but I have many, many instruments here, and I'm not formally trained. But I tell you what, it just makes my body sing, um, of just playing instruments. So I can really understand that, and I find when I'm happy, and I'm in the flow of life, I don't go near them. But when I'm a bit down, or when I'm having, I'll go near them, and that's when it all comes out. It's very haunting. But I've, I love that now because that's where the magic is for me. That's the healing. It's like the instruments heal me and they kind of like pull me out, out of that space. That was a bit deep. You never know where you're going to go here. <laughs> you never know what's going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> oh, you are such, oh, pardon, go on. That's a beautiful part of it. Like it just like sometimes it's just like, oh, that's a the surprise. Like you're going to, you never know how deep it is or the music piece you created. But yeah. You are such a gift to the world. Thank you so much for reaching out, um, just reaching out and wanting to have a chat and sharing just a snippet of your life. It's so helpful to people. It's so helpful to us to just sit together and share our story. Um, how can people find you? How can they work with you? How can they get some sick beats? <laughs> uh, I, my Instagram, I like my Instagram handle is uh, Aspirin City and uh, it's like the Aspirin is the pill, it's a painkiller. And the city is like the the city scene. And uh, I have also have a Spotify. It's a, the artist's name is just Aspirin. Oh, wow. Do you have anything I, you'd like to share with our little reflector community from your experience? Um, I think the most important reflector is like, I think we currently, the whole society is not a pay too much attention about a reflector, but reflector want to share their ex experience. So we have to go through that period of time, which like I went through the same journey as like kind of invisible, which you have lots to share, but you don't have the chance. And I think the key takeaway is just to be, be patient and uh, you will find your community or the people who like to hear your thoughts or your opinion. And at the same time, I think it's more important for us to 
check ourselves, clean the mirror, clean all those conditions we had before. Every time we are feeling those emotions and check what is the intention of different layers, trying to deconstruct it and see how we feel so that when it's the time finally arrives, we can make sure our mirror is clean to reflect back what is the current society it is. Beautiful. Thank you. Wise words. Wise words. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here with me again. Thank you for sharing your journey. Really appreciate you. And I look forward to connecting with you again. I really like that. See how you're going in of another course. six months. Yes. Like, I think, I think, I, I will really hope like some reflector should, should, because I was just talking to my mentor yesterday, say, all oh, the reflector have a Zoom meeting, share each other about like how, see how it goes. I was like, oh, that's a, such a fantastic idea. But yeah, like I, I hope we can reconnect again or maybe even a community thing and see how we trying to do that or like increase the awareness of the, the whole society. Yeah, beautiful. I'm going to let you go, my friend. Thank you so much. Let's keep in touch. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>